I was down around $30,000. My heart nearly dropped out. Yo, this IPO is a joke. The system no rate with them corrupt. The rich only want to get richer. Future Million here is Wagwan. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Demetrius Fearman. We lose a whole heap of money in the market this week. Whole heap of things happen. But before we get to that, let's do a little quick update. Looking on the indices today, we can see that the main market is up 2.14%. The junior market is up 0.09%. And then we have that the combined index that is at 1.93%. The financial index is up 1.15%. The manufacturing is up 2.44%. And the US equities is up 4.57%. Let's jump on to corporate actions, aka dividends. And it's not a lot to add on from last week. But here we have proven they're going to pay their shareholders 16 cents on September 9, 2022. Then we have Carreras. They're going to pay their shareholders on September 7, a dividend of 13 cents. And that's where I get paid if I don't sell. Stay tuned for the new segment in this video. Yeah, that wraps up our dividend section. Not much to talk about. Let's jump into the first story. What's going on with Carreras? So if you watch this channel, you know that I'm a shareholder in Carreras because they pay the most dividends on the stock market. I saw this article on Instagram in immediately clicked on the link, rushed over to the Gleaner website to make sure that I can read the news and see what's going on. But I couldn't because I was met with a paywall. I didn't know that we had to pay to read the Gleaner. But in further investigation, I realized that because it's an article about Carreras and all the articles about Carreras and cigarettes and tobacco, there is a paywall. So the highlight on the Instagram post goes a little like this. Cigarette trader Carreras Limited is raising concern that new tobacco regulations could force the company's second largest shareholder Holder to offload its $2 billion stake. The National Insurance Fund, the state operated pension fund, holds 214.18 million shares in Carreras, which gives it a 4.41% ownership in the cigarettes trader. The bill, in its present form, speaks to the prohibition on investment in the tobacco industry by public entities and employees. Now, if you're like me and you want to understand the climate, get the real understanding of what this post really means, you would go into the comment section. Immediately, you see people talking about the ethics are wrong with the NIF. I can't believe this company has people pension money invested in cigarettes that are killing people. I can't believe they're into tobacco. Then you have a other hand of people saying that Carreras pays the most dividends. So it's a no brainer for the pension fund to guarantee you your pension that they have to invest in high yielding stocks. At the end of the day, all the comments can be narrowed down to opinions. Is it you agree or you don't agree? At the end of the day, this is the story. Now, when the retail investors heard about this news, the market did what the market does. Before the news, the stock price was at $9.37. But to see as Monday come and trading start, it just plummeted down to $8.83 with high selling volume right there. And it didn't stop there. It dipped down even further and further until it bottomed out at $8.27. Now as a shareholder, my heart dropped out. I felt extreme pain. I'm sorry that I didn't get to take any screenshots of my portfolio on that day, but I was down around $30,000. My heart nearly drop out. 30 grand. You know what you guess that? That could have buy my grocery. Imagine I had Carreras at an average price of $8.63. And if you follow the trend recently in the market, Carreras went up to $9.67. So I was in a lot of profit. And I sold some up there, but I should have sold more. But anyways, 30 grand down and now I'm weeping and missing my future grocery money. Looking at Carreras shareholder list, you'd have the top shareholder, which is Rothman Holdings Limited, and they have around 50% ownership in the company, which translates to 2,446,508,260 shares. And in second place with 4% ownership, you would have the National Insurance Fund, which is NIF, and they have a total amount of shares of 200. 14,184,690 shares. That's approximately $1.7 billion worth of shares that's going to be on the market if they decide to relinquish their shares. Now you're going to ask yourself this question. How will this disrupt Carreras? This is where you stop listening to me because I'm not a financial advisor. As always, I'm just the guy on YouTube that likes to talk about money. 
Careerize has a section in their annual report which they call the risk management. Specifically, they talk about the tobacco regulations that will inhibit their growth strategy. The enactment of proposal 4 or rumors of regulation that is unbalanced and impractical and significantly impairs the company's ability to communicate with consumers, differentiate our products in the marketplace and launch future products poses a risk to the company's long-term sustainability. Particularly, this could lead to an adverse impact on the ability to compete within the legal tobacco industry with increased illicit trade. But they also have a mitigation plan, meaning this is how we're trying to fight against this. Proactive and robust shareholder engagement and litigation strategy for balanced regulations, ongoing monitoring of marketing plans to ensure compliance with internal self-regulations and local legislation. While they do have a plan, to me, it doesn't seem sure to work. This just sounds like whatever is in the bill or whatever the bill imposes, them just have to work with it. And at the end of the day, you can't wrong them because this is the law of the land. And if you want to operate here, you have to follow these rules. So this just sounds like bad news overall and sounds like a downturn for the company. But is it really? With Supreme Ventures Limited aiding them in distribution and also having record high revenues, it seems like the company is performing regardless of what retail investors think of them or think their ethics are wrong. Also, within their top 10 shareholders pool, you have other pension funds. I don't think they will turn their back so easily because Carreras has been providing year over year growth in dividends per share. So even with the NIF possibly dropping all their shares in Carreras, I think that another big company will step up and capture those shares. For me personally, I'm holding and waiting on more news to see how it goes, but there's always PBS, 10.5% dividends per year. It's a good bargain. If you're like me and 15,000 other Jamaicans, then chances are you have applied for the one-on-one -on -one IPO. And a lot of people have been saying, yo, this IPO is a joke. One-on-one -on -one closed off the same day, August 12, 2022, and that's no surprise. If you were like me and you had a plan for this IPO, which was to dump a large sum of money and maybe get 10 to 15% in your allotment, and even though we know that it is 380 million shares that were being offered, which is very small, and chances or we wouldn't get that amount of allotment, we still thought that maybe we'd get a little something something. We were wrong. So let me just read the allocation breakdown which was posted by IC Insider. General Pool received the first 5,000 units plus a pro rata allocation of approximately 2.23% of the excess. Investors in the convertible loan conversion and the key strategic partners pools receive a full allocation of the shares. Applicants in the Sajikor pool receive the first 450,000 units plus a pro rata allocation of approximately 1.1% of the balance of the excess. Teachers and trainers got the first 80,000 units plus a pro rata share of around 3.47% of the excess applied for. Applicants in the employees pool received the first 500,000 units plus a pro rata allocation of approximately 69.83% of the risk. A total of 108.75 million shares were allocated to the owners of the convertible loans at 80 cents each. 60 million shares for the key strategic part partners 30 million units each for the Sajikor reserve pool, the teachers and trainers pool and the employees reserve share pool and 121.25 million shares for the general pool at $1 per share. That sounds like a lot to break down but let me just do the quick maths. Majority of us here are the general pool so I'm gonna do the maths right now and you can just transfer this math to the other pools just put in the values that were presented. Let's say you had $100,000 put aside for this IPO so you applied for 100,000 units because each year unit was sold for $1 per share, so $100,000 will give you 100,000 shares. Allocation comes out now and you'll only get the first 5,000 units of what you applied for and the rest of money you'll only get 2.23% of that. So 5,000 subtracted from 100,000 leaves 95,000. So we'll put aside that 5,000 shares. We're going to get 5,000 shares. Now to get the excess, the amount that they want to give us which is 2.23% of 95,000, 2.23% 
3% of 95,000 is going to give us 2,118 shares. Now, overall, if you have invested $100,000 in the general pool, you would have only received 7,118 shares, which is $7,118 out of the 100,000. Now, this might seem doom and gloom. I know you may understand why people say oh, the IPO are foolishness, but there might be a light at the end of the tunnel. Since we can clearly see that there is demand for this stock whenever it comes to the open market with the amount of buying pressure the buying demand then this stock may possibly go to the two dollar region within one week so now your seven thousand shares would be fourteen thousand shares which is fourteen thousand dollars but that still is not the money that you invest for you want more money than that at the end of the day most of us invest because we want to get rich even though the get rich quick thing doesn't really work out most people after that what's going to happen is that it's going to be a battle between retail investors and retail investors just the average me and you on the market we're going to try and get this stock for one dollars up to one dollar fifty per share because each of us has a target of two dollars in our minds some of us wanted to go to two dollars three dollars four dollars but the thing is we're going to try and get in at an average price of one dollars to one dollar fifty per share and that's going to be hard to buy because a lot of people are going to be buying and bidding also so it's not going to be clear cut by the shares and you'll get them but why are these ipos so small why don't they want us to get everything that we applied for the system no real to them corrupt the rich only want to get richer <laughs> before we throw stones watch this video from kalila reynolds so you guys from friday since the news broke of the one-on-one -on -one ipo allotments you've been flooding my dms and my comments with messages like this complaining how you didn't get a large allotment but i need you to understand something there would be no big bumper girls without the flat back to get them if everybody had a big body there would just be people there can be no big bumper girl without me i am essential to the equation if everybody got full allotment there would be no demand there would be no rapid spike in price without low allotments it is essential to the equation what causes an IPO to pop? That quick flip that a lot of you are looking for. Flat back to get them. Scarcity. Scarcity. Supply and demand. If everybody got everything they wanted, there would be no scarcity. There'd be lots of supply and then low demand because everybody get everything. There's no incentive for trading. And then the price would stay flat. Flat back to get them. But if you want the price to appreciate quickly, then low allotments are a good indication that that's going to happen. If you don't understand that, then God go with you. All she's trying to say is that limited supply creates demand and higher demand creates higher prices. This is good news overall for the market because it's showing that more people are becoming interested in this investment investor space. So for everybody who wants to buy one on one, you can expect it to be on the market early September. So that's my market update, my investments update for the week and my future investments update also. Hopefully you guys like this and I'll continue to do more if you say so. As always, thank you for like, sharing and subscribing to this channel. And if you want to be a part of the crew the future millionaires gang and you can always ring that notification bell so you can know and see when a video comes out so you don't miss the important information until next time happy investing